Nakita nyo na ba ang bagong bago sa news sa ating low carb community? Merong recent news na nagsasabi na ang keto-like diet, also known as low-carb diet, and including keto diet ay meron daw higher risk of heart disease. Yun yung itatakol natin today para once and for all, kahit pa ito ay pabalik-balik na, and let's see kung ano yung mga considerations that we can think of kung tayo ay makakakita ng ganitong mga news na nilalabas. So this is your Diet of Clara, Dr. Josephine Grace Rohotan. Good evening sa lahat. Maraming salamat for watching. And before we begin, make sure na ma-share nyo ito. You can share this to your timeline, to your messenger, to your friends, and save this video para next time na merong magtanong about this one. If you are on low-carb or keto diet, you can easily access this video para maisagot sa kanila. So, yung title ng news na yon would be Keto-like diet may be associated with higher risk of heart disease daw according sa studies na ito. So first, we will tackle yung study na ito which has this title and ang pinaka-gist ng study na ito is that increase daw yung cardiovascular disease risk ng mga tao na naka-low carb at keto kasi mataas yung kanilang LDL or bad cholesterol. So the main theme of this news ay nanggagaling sa idea na mataas yung LDL ng mga taong naka-low carb or naka-keto diet. Okay? So, yun yung premise and I'm sure marami po yung concern kasi marami, very common yung pagtaas ng LDL among low carbers or among people who are doing keto-like diet or pagpapababa ng carbohydrate intake sa isang araw. So we have 10 considerations for this topic at ito yung number one natin. Based on the study na kung saan binase yung news na ito, ay first, kailangan alam natin that this study is actually not peer-reviewed. Okay? So yung rationale lang nila, hindi, ibig sabihin ng not peer-reviewed, hindi pa siya na peer review ng mga uh, qualified na organizations to say na eto talaga ay of high quality of good quality research. Eto I just presented in the Congress of Cardiology na ipresenta pa lang pero hindi pa siya na i-review. Yung rationale kung bakit sinasabi nila na ang LDL na mataas na LDL na nanggagaling sa low-carb diet ay nakakataas ng incident ng heart attack, ng stroke, pagkakaroon ng pagbara sa ugat, which, which is a part of the umbrella ng tinatawag nating cardiovascular risk, ay hindi pa na peer reviewed So, hindi actually nila natingnan yung other inflammatory markers or yung more specific na markers that, that can dictate kung eto talaga ay high risk for cardiovascular events tulad ng CAC or coronary artery calcium scoring. So ano yung coronary artery calcium scoring? Ito yung tinitingnan mismo yung amount of calcifications na nasa ugat. Kasi based on our experience, ating mga pasyente, and of course many of our community members in Life Without Rice, Low Carb Feasting and Fasting Community, and other groups here in the Philippines and abroad na reaching millions na in number, marami po yung mga low carbers na noon, bago sila mag-low carb, ay ang kanilang CAC score ay actually hindi ganon kababa. So, mataas yung kanilang CAC score. Pero nung sila ay nag-low carb na, kahit pa tinigil nila yung kanilang ibang gamot, based of course sa kanilang pakiramdam and others, hopefully others are guided by their doctors, ay yung CAC score nila ay naging zero na. So, from higher risk, the higher the CAC score, the higher the risk of cardiovascular events na pagbara sa kanilang mga ugat. At dumadami na nga na mga low carbers at yung mga nakasunod sa ating dietary lifestyle modification na yung calcium score nila ay naging mababa. So this is 
kahit despite the increase in LDL. So, meron talagang iba na tumataas yung kanilang LDL. However, hindi ibig sabihin na tumataas din yung kanilang overall risk of cardiovascular disease. So, yung study na pong iyon ay not peer-reviewed and also hindi po sapat yung hypercholesterolemia lamang based on that na magsasabi na ito ay mag-lead na into cardiovascular risk tulad ng again heart attack, stroke at pagbara sa ating mga ugat without looking at other markers tulad ng CAC. So calcium scoring ay isa sa mga standard when it comes to looking at kung ano na yung risk nyo for developing this risk and pag dedicate na ang LDL lamang ang basehan is actually not enough. So, wag muna tayong mag-jump into conclusion. So, that's our number one consideration bago tayo matakot sa new study na ito na nagsasabing keto-like diet may be associated with higher risk of heart disease. So, that's number one consideration. It's not yet peer-reviewed and it's not enough to say just simply because tumaas yung LDL. Kasi marami, again, Tumataas yung LDL pero all other markers of inflammation ay bumababa, especially calcium scoring. So number two consideration ay, yung number two consideration natin, majority of, these stud, of the studies supporting these results are actually funded. So unfortunately, hindi talaga yan mawawala. So just for example, eto yung study na ito ay nagsasabi na merong mataas na level of mortality and uh, morbidity. So marami yung nagkakasakit kapag yung mataas yung baseline na level ng LDL and total cholesterol, kaya dapat itong pababain. So yung pinaka gist nito ay sinasabi na dapat pababain yung LDL level. But in here, sa conflict of interest, marami sa mga doctors na ito, marami sa mga researchers na ito are actually, aso are actually affiliated with others na mga pharmaceutical companies that are actually merong kinuproduce na cholesterol-lowering drugs. So, cholesterol-lowering drugs tulad ng mga statins at marami pang iba. So, yan. Nakikita nyo sa ating screen yung mga associated na affiliations ng mga researchers na ito na gumagawa ng ganitong mga majority of these results ay eto nga yung kanilang nakikita. So, that is why as much as possible, we would like to be very, very objective. Tingnan natin muna na the, these studies are not being funded by companies na nagproproduce ng mga gamot na direktang makakabenepisyo sa mga studies na ito. We are not against any pharmaceutical industries because as a doctor, nagpe-prescribe pa rin ako ng ating mga kailangan gamot. In fact, I just ordered my list of prescription kasi nagre-reseta pa rin po ako ng mga gamot. It's just that when I give my prescri prescriptions, I make sure na eto ay kailangan na kailangan ng pasyente at eto ay hindi na maikokorek basta-basta ng ating lifestyle or dietary modifications. So, that's number two of our considerations na majority of these studies na nagsusupport sa claim na increased CVD risk because of elevated or bad cholesterol ay sila rin ay merong parang derechong benefit. So, there could be a conflict of interest kumbaga. Kasi nga, sila ay makaka-benefit the moment that people are afraid of their LDL cholesterol. So, moving on tayo. It's not all bad news actually. So, in this study naman, of more than 6 million people of healthy individuals, nakita nila actually na the higher the cholesterol, the longer the lifespan. So this is a contradictory sa ibang nakikita. But as a major difference, yung mga study na nagsasabing mataas yung cholesterol at nakakamatay ito are already 
among the patients na marami ng other illness, whereas this study, higher cholesterol, longer lifespan, are actually abnormal or somewhat generally healthy individuals. Also means na yung merong mataas na LDL, mataas na cholesterol, pero walang ibang sakit na like diabetes, other signs of inflammation, that is also related to poor lifestyle habit. So generally, if you are feeling better, feeling well, naging okay yung pakiramdam niyo, you only have isolated higher cholesterol, then maybe it shouldn't be a cause of your worry. So yun yung pangatlong consideration natin na actually hindi lahat ng research ay nagsasabing kailangan tayo matakot sa cholesterol, especially if you are still generally healthy individual because Meron nga mga studies din na nagsasabi na nakikita natin among 6 million, more than 6 million participants included sa study na ito ay mas mataas ang cholesterol, mas mataas ang lifespan. So now, we will move on to our fourth consideration. So ano yung fourth consideration natin? Our fourth consideration would be not all LDL are created equal. There are bad and there are neutral to good LDL. So ano-ano yan? So for this study, sinasabi na kailangan daw iwasan yung mga animal fats because yung mga animal fats ay direktang nakakapagtapataas ng LDL. Kaya dapat kung gusto nating pababaan ay iwasan natin lahat ng animal fats. But how true is this assumption? Titingnan natin because yung pinaka-famous or most common na kinakatakutan especially ng mga doctors din even I myself, kinakatakutan ko rin noon before I learned the natural healing na nagagawa ng proper nutrition is this one. Dahil kapag daw mataas ang iyong LDL, it is already considered as a bad cholesterol. So yung tinitingnan lang parate, the more the LDL ay mas grabe yung pagbara sa katawan. So they only differentiated here as HDL. LDL, triglycerides, and total cholesterol. However, that is not the case. Hindi po ganyan kasimple. Kasi not all LDL are created equal. We have to look at this graph. And this graph will show us na hindi lang HDL at LDL yung nasa ating dugo. Meron ding IDL or inter intermediate size na, na lipoprotein. And then, meron din very low density lipoprotein. Actually, yung VLDL at LDL, eto yung mga nakakatakot or totoong bad cholesterol. And in fact, LDL alone, hindi pwedeng biglang sasabihin that LDL is already a bad cholesterol because LDL actually ay merong seven different sizes. And this one, again, are one of those na mga hindi ko rin alam noon. I only started to get to know them as I study more, as I go down to the rabbit hole sa ating low-carb and fasting journey. Yes, it is included on the mga intermittent fasters because yung mga naka-intermittent fasting are actually getting the benefits from burning of fat. So kahit pa somewhat, hindi sila nakaganon ka strict low-carb, but they are still getting the benefit of similarly the same mechanism of lowering the insulin level and eventually na-activate yung fat burning sa katawan. So again, not all LDL are created equal kasi marami pong levels yung LDL natin. So there are seven different sizes and then the smaller the LDL, the more dangerous it is. The more, the bigger the LDL are, as, are actually not associated with atherosclerosis. Tawag natin dito buoyant LDL, hindi sila nakakalid into toxic na effects sa ating mga ugat. So to make it clearer, eto po yung pagkakaiba ng LDL ng naka-high carb at naka-low carb. Kasi yung mga naka-low carb are actually having LDL that are mostly pattern A. So eto, yung bilog na blue na ito na merong malalaking bola sa loob. So kahit papareho yung bigat nila pero yung yung lamang cholesterol niya are actually big and boy and buoyant at eto ay hindi siya madaling na oxidize kasi when 
the particles inside are small tulad ng nasa kabila. Ito yung tinatawag nating pattern B na LDL na mataas among people who have ha, into high carb diet kasi minsan noon may mga taong high carb sila mataas yung kanilang LDL pero eto ay kasamang mataas na triglycerides mataas na level ng blood sugar mataas din na other inflammatory markers may fatty liver pero kung ikaw ay naka-low carb, usually pwedeng tumaas. Hindi naman lahat. Marami rin naka-low carb na normal pa rin yung level of LDL nila. Pero sa mga tumataas naman, as long as na yung wala pong pagtaas ng VLDL, walang pagtaas ng ng triglycerides, most likely you have pattern A. At hindi ito na-oxidized easily, therefore, hindi ito nakakalid into atherosclerosis. Hindi ito nakakakontribute ng pagbara sa ugat. Okay? So, that's the difference between LDL ng mga naka-low carb at naka-high carb. However, For this study, diretso nilang sinabi na elevated LDL at bad cholesterol lang. Hindi man lang in-identify kung anong uri or gaano ka-different yung LDL na nandito. Kasi nga, hindi lahat ay pare-pareho. So again, LDL na nakikita natin for our consideration number five among low carbers, it's not actually the case. Kung meron mang iba, na hindi naging successful sa kanilang low-carb journey. Yung iba ay nagsasabing low-carb lang sila, pero baka minsan lang sila nag-low-carb and then after a while ay bumalik din sila sa high-carb. They were not monitored kasi nga marami din na hindi nakakastick dito, especially if they are not doing it right. So again, kung gusto, merong iba na nagsasabi din for our sixth consideration na kailangan pababain yung LDL, This is consistent with our consideration number three, na higher cholesterol, longer lifespan. Because on our consideration number six, actually, ang low LDL does not equate better mortality. Hindi ibig sabihin na kapag ikaw ay mababa yung iyong LDL level, ay ikaw ay mabubuhay na. Uh, say for example, for this one na nakatingin uh, ng mga saturated fat intake, specifically coming from dairies, they saw na hindi pala ito related or directly associated with cancers and other other poor prognosis. In fact, mas naging maganda yung kanilang result when they when they consume more dietary fat intake coming from dairies. But bago kayo ma-excited sa pagkain ng mga dairy products, it is especially mentioned na higher dairy products on fermented kind of mga dairies. Ibig sabihin ng fermented kind of dairy, so wala na yung sugar component, wala na yung lactose component. Mostly natural yogurt and natural cheeses and also eggs. So those are your healthier choices when it comes to dairy products. Because ang low LDL hindi talaga not equated to better mortality. Again, in this 6 million study, 6 million people study, mataas na cholesterol, have longer lifespan, especially considering na ito ay mababa sa adding levels of other inflammatory markers. So with this one, I want you to take into account na hindi lang po LDL yung dapat nating tingnan. One thing that you can consider would be the triglyceride HDL ratio. Okay? So kung nandyan yung mga result ninyo sa inyong laboratories, sa inyong total cholesterol, sa inyong lipid profile, you can check your triglycerides to HDL ratio. Dapat lower than 2 is to 1. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Ibig sabihin, for example, kung yung triglycerides ninyo ay nasa 100, at least yung inyong HDL ay nasa 50. Kung nasa 150 yung triglycerides ninyo, yung HDL ninyo ay kailangan pataasin ng more than 75 so that you can still have that 2 is to 1 ratio. So you can make your profile healthier by doing two things. Either papataasin ninyo yung inyong HDL by consuming more healthier fats 
or pababain yung triglycerides. Okay? There are many ways to lower triglycerides. First, of course, is use it. So, para sa mga mataas pa, yung triglycerides sa katawan, you have energy that you can use for exercise. You have a lot of, of these possibly pwedeng makonvert into ketones as energy na pwede niyong gamitin. So, all of this you can do. So that's one thing that you can consider, hindi lang basta LDL yung ating titingnan. Because yung nakita sa research na ito, ang best predictor pala of atherogenic LDL subclass phenotype ng pattern B patients with type 2 diabetes is actually the level of triglycerides in the body. So Ang pagtingin sa level of triglycerides is a better predictor, especially among those with diabetes mellitus. Okay? So, hindi lang LDL yung kailangan tingnan. Kailangan tingnan din yung level of triglycerides. Okay? So, number seven nating consideration, we will now move on to our seventh consideration, would be the remnant cholesterol. So, ano yung remnant cholesterol? Remnant cholesterol, nakikita nito na... Isa ito sa importante ng nakaka-predict ng cardiovascular disease beyond LDL and ApoB. So this is a primarily a prevention study. So mostly among people na wala pang ganong maraming risk for CVD to begin with. Yung hyperinsulinemia, yung pagtaas ng cholesterol na nanggagaling sa high fructose intake, high carbohydrate intake. So with this study, nakikita natin that it is actually very, very important. So what else is here? So we will show you the study presenting this one. So remnant cholesterol predicts cardiovascular disease beyond LDL and ApoB. So ang, pag, ang nakita nila that remnant cholesterol is a standalone risk for heart attack and stroke. Again, remnant cholesterol yung mas magandang tingnan at hindi lang po LDL. Before you threaten you can actually compute your own remnant cholesterol. So total co cholesterol, ididedact nyo lang minus LDL minus HDL. Okay? So total cholesterol, deduct minus uh, LDL and HDL because again, LDL is actually not bad. Hindi siya automatic na sasabihin mong bad. The real dangerous cholesterol are the ones na na-discuss natin a little while ago, the intermediate size lipoprotein and the very low density lipoprotein. At dapat, for you to have a lower risk, okay, ay dapat yung remnant cholesterol nyo ay less than 15 lamang. 15 and below. Because nakita nila sa studies na ito, kahit pa may mga tao na mababa ang LDL, meron silang low LDL, pero yung remnant cholesterol nila ay nasa 24 microgram, ay meron silang 40 to 50% higher risk of major heart disease and stroke. So nakita nila dito na in this study, and this is published by Johns Hopkins Hospital. So this is a very reputable hospital and a research center na hindi tayo kailangang matakot sa LDL. Mas kailangan natin katakutan ang mataas na remnant cholesterol. So you can now compute for your remnant cholesterol by yung total cholesterol minus the LDL and minus the HDL. Dapat yung kanyang conversion yan ay less than 15 lamang yung makukuha ninyong result to make sure na kayo ay na nasa safer side. So what else do we have here? Yan, eto pa. So in this study naman, makita nila na ang, mag, ang improvement in glycemic control and more weight loss were seen among very low carbohydrate diet na mga participants as compared to low fat diet. So these findings are very, very important. Okay? And of course, meron ding impact on overall performance sa mga athletes naman ito. Nakita nila na yung high carb and low carb among athletes may not differ so much. Pero yung high carb ay nakakabababa nga ng 
kanilang levels of LDL pero nakakapagpataas ng kanilang triglycerides. And we already know na yung triglycerides ay isa ring independent risk factor, marker ng cardiovascular health. So, we will now move on to our number eight consideration. So, number eight consideration, ang study na ito, yung low-carb definition nila, is actually not very low-carb. At least not on our usual na levels. Kasi yung dinidictate nila dito is liberal, liberal low-carb at 20 to 30 percent. Dito sa study na ito na nagsasabi na keto-like diet. Because the typical diet pala ng standard diet na uso sa buong mundo, which is considered as the normal diet, is actually comprising about 55 to 65% yung kanilang intake of carbohydrate. Yun yung dati nating intake, yung hindi pinag-iisipang kind of diet. And now, when we they lower the carbohydrate to 20 to 30%, they already label it as low-carb. However, for our practice, 20 to 30 percent is still very high, especially for those na nangangailangan ng pagpapababa, pagpapababa na kanilang inflammatory level through lowering of insulin. So, lowering of insulin should be lower than 20 percent. Nasa 10 percent lang usually yung advice natin. So, these are the carbohydrates that we want our patients to avoid. So the refined carbohydrates, stable sugar, syrup, juice, soda, candy, white bread, white rice, yung complex carbohydrates, marami yan. But with here, even the oatmeal, brown rice, quinoa, beans, majority of whole grains avoided yan. And kung kakain man ng uh, vegetables and need, so, need, seeds and nuts, dapat ay considered yung overall carbohydrate content na ito. And what is that? Overall carbohydrate intake. So yan, they are discussing liberal to more liberal. So 50 to 100 grams. And with this amount, usually we just advise this na pwede sa mga very healthy individuals, active lifestyle, or growing children. Pero for those adults na kailangan muna ng reversal of insulin resistance, I we recommend to do low-carbohydrate diet or just the moderate low-carb, which is 20 to 50 grams per day. That is why no wonder na meron pa risk of cardiovascular events because actually, yung sinasabi nilang low-carb sa kanilang study is actually not the ideal low-carb that we recommend, na nire-recommenda natin sa mga taong kailangan ng insulin re reversal. Insulin resistance reversal. Kailangan maging insulin sensitive muna. So, hindi siya totoong low carb. Okay, so what else are the considerations na kailangan nating tingnan? Dahil sa study na nagsasabi na ang pagkaroon ng keto diet or keto-like diet already can increase your risk of heart disease. So, baka there is truth to it sa kanilang study, but this is the consideration that we have here. Baka it's not the real low-carb that we are promoting. And remember, baka hindi para sa kanila yung keto level na yon. Because not all low-carbers are keto keto dieters. So, magkaiba yung level ng keto diet and moderate low carb because by definition, yung true keto diet ay nasa at least 70% ng calorie intake ay nanggagaling sa taba. Okay? And whereas yung low carb ay typically yung kanyang intake of calories nasa generally 50% or less lang yung kanyang fat source as the energy, energy source coming from fats, and yung protein ay tumataas hanggang 40% with the carbs only up to 10%. So not all low carbers are on keto levels of fat intake. So with this study, baka meron silang mga pasyente na nag-keto diet kahit hindi naman recommended. Because like even for me in my practice, in fairness, hindi rin ako nagre-recommend ng real keto diet, ng true keto diet to everyone. Keto diet is medically prescribed for certain conditions and 
hindi siya fit for all. Baka merong nag-increase risk, no? Na baka hindi naman talaga dapat keto diet yung ginawa nila. But because of these, sa so many testimonials, they joined and eventually they feel na parang maganda yung kanilang pakiramdam pero baka hindi tama yung pagkakagawa nila. This is the importance of why we promote a proper way, guided way of doing low-carb nutrition. Kasi yung keto diet are medically prescribed for certain conditions and baka hindi bagay sa lahat. Ang no na nakaka-benefit ng sa keto diet would be the ones with intractable epilepsy, yung merong Alzheimer's disease, and certain types of cancers and tumors, at meron din certain kinds of kidney diseases, especially chronic kidney diseases. But for the general public and other na mga may sakit, it might not be the case. Baka hindi bagay sa inyo yung keto diet. Baka low carb lang. At yung mga nag-keto na hindi pala dapat sa kanila keto, then maybe that can lead into higher risk of developing those risks. Because one thing that you have to consider, kung kayo ay meron pang mataas na fat level sa inyong katawan that you want to burn, then actually you might not want to go into keto diet, especially full calorie na keto diet kasi hindi mabibigyan ng pagkakataon that your body can burn its own fats. Kasi nga, yung magagamit na lang na taba ay yung taba na lang na kinakain ninyo. And the fats in your body can just stay there. Pwede lang siyang masagnate. And if your body is already inflamed to begin with, so baka hindi ito appropriate na ibigay sa inyong pangangatawan. That is why it is best to do this the guided way. Again, because... Keto diet is a kind of low carb, but it is a stricter form of low carb that is only indicated lang on specific conditions. And we are moving on to our 10th consideration sa ating low carb lifestyle. At ano yung 10th consideration na ito, yung pinaka-importante sa lahat is the type of fat intake is very important. Because if you can remember here, this is just looking at the amount of fats. But the more important question is, anong uri ng taba yung kanilang kinakain? Kasi kung puro bad fats yung kanilang kinitake, then it might not be the best case. So ano yung mga halimbawa ng mga bad fats? So bad fats generally are the fats that are made in factories, not made in Nature. So, ano ito? Bad fats, soybean oil, canola oil. Sinong present dyan sa ganito yung ginagamit na cooking oil sa bahay? Corn oil. Yung merong mga trans fats. Yung iba, walang trans fats. Tinatago nila sa pangalang hydrogenated oils which practically somewhat similar when it comes to overall effects sa katawan. Partially hydrogenated oils, yan, ginawa pang partially para hindi masyado, pero ganun pa rin yun. Cotton seed oil, majority of margarines. So, yun pa rin ang different kinds of fats and th these bad fats, these unnatural factory-made fats ang kailangan nating iwasan. What are the good fats that you can you can consume? So, meron tayong avocado. Avocado oil, be cautious lang kasi marami sa mga avocado oil are actually not the healthiest type. Yung iba, nililabel lang as avocado oil but it might not really be avocado oil. So, get real avocado. Eat real avocado na lang to be safe. Certain nuts and seeds but not all nuts. Remember, peanut is not a nut po. It's uh, it's part of the family of legumes. So, hindi siya nuts kasi mataas rin yung kanyang level of, of omega-6 na fats that can be inflammatory. So, eggs, especially organic eggs, Coconut oil, especially virgin coconut oil, wild, co wild caught fish, yung hindi farmed fish. So they are eating yung natural pa nila na food. So they, are, they have higher proportion of omega-3. Extra virgin olive oil, especially kapag kinonsumo natin ito ng a uh, raw healthy way na more on salads, raw, mas, mas, mas maganda po yun. And if you choose meat, grass-fed meat has the highest component of good fats and also 
grass-fed dairies kung meron man. So, unsaturated fats mostly are coming from plants or kung sa animal man would be the coming from fishes. So, majority noon ay mataas yung kanilang unsaturated, mono-unsaturated fats, mostly omega-3 din. And for saturated fats, you have cheese and dairies and meat but you should avoid trans fats, okay? All of these bad fats kailangan natin i-avoid. So, sa lahat ng ito, you should consider the type of fat intake. So, hindi natin alam kung ano yung pinagkakain ng mga respondents sa study na ito. Dahil baka puro bad fat yung kanilang kinakain at kinukonsumo. So, I would like to emphasize sa ating food list na yung mga all-purpose cream as much as they are low-carb but they might not be the best kind of fats because they're already highly processed at hindi natin alam baka nag, uh, partly ito ay meron ng mga hydrogenated oils na nakasama, na nakahalo. So that's why yun yung isang consider natin. So if you are doing low-carb but you are choosing your fat intake very well, you are choosing the good fat, so hopefully, wala tayong i-worry, especially when you look at your remnant cholesterol, eto ay mababa, at yung nakikita natin na ang LDL ninyo is just isolated na pagtaas ng LDL at wala itong kasamang other bad markers, ay kailangan natin itong i-consider na maybe there's nothing to worry about. So what are the takeaway ng ating ng at low-carb na, na pagkain. So, takeaway number one, kung kayo ay maglo-low-carb, do clean low-carb regularly. Ibig sabihin, as much as possible, kapag nagkamakain kayo, stick more on low-carb. We understand na merong mga panahon talaga na hindi nakaka-stick into low-carb, but at least majority of the time, kayo ay naka-low-carb. And if ever magkikito kayo, make sure na meron kayong indication if you need keto proportions. Okay? So that's takeaway number one. Always choose your, your sources of good. That's our takeaway number one. And for takeaway number two, choose your fat sources very well. So again... Yan yung kailangan nating isipin. Always choose the good fats, okay? And avoid as much as possible the ones na nasa caution and danger list na kinds of fats because even if they are low carb, but they can be inflammatory, okay? So our takeaway number three, your last takeaway today is listen to your body. It's been a dictum in our medical training na hindi mo treat yung laboratory results ng pasyente but the patient himself. So listen to your body. If kayo ay hindi pa naka low carb and you feel like you are not at your best, you are not at your healthiest, then maybe you can try to do low carb. If you are doing low carb and if you are afraid kasi nga nakita nyo yung news na ito but try to listen to your body your body will tell you if you are on the right track or not because for me speaking for myself okay I've never felt any better than when I did and when I am doing clean, low carb. So if ever you don't know how to listen to your body then you can ask help from your laboratory. So yung aim natin is to lower yung totoong alam natin harmful, which would be the triglycerides and VLDL. That's part of the remnant cholesterol. And then yung insulin resistance, which is considered to be the marker of inflammation kapag mataas yung insulin level. If walang insulin determination, insulin level determination sa laboratories ninyo nearby, you can just check your HbA1c to get your average blood glucose level for the last three months, which can somewhat equate to the levels of insulin na nasa secret ng inyong katawan. And of course, other inflammatory markers like ESR, CRP, and liver enzymes like SGPT, SGOT. So those are the things that you can consider. And if that is not enough, so a little reminder lang. So we have different kinds of fats you can consume. When you consume fats, first rule is consume the fats that are 
natural. Okay, so natural sources, hindi gawa sa factory. Number two consideration, make sure that when you choose your fats, meron itong equal amounts of omega-3 to omega-6. Kasi even if our natural fats like pork, uh, chicken, and beef, even if they're natural fats, but their ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 might be low. So kailangan, we will aim for at, at least like 1 is to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. So hindi kayo, kung hindi kayo nakakain ng healthy omega-3 na fats, most commonly coming from fish, then maybe you can supplement with a good quality, high quality na fish oil then whenever you consume them. And others, the healthier na walang kontra, kahit Mediterranean diet or kung ano man, would be the healthier fats na pasok sa lahat ng diet considered as good. That would include your avocado, your olives, and your fish oils. So your fatty fishes, okay? Kung kayo ay medyo na uumay na sa saturated fats at natatakot na sa mataas na LDL, try to lower your overall saturated fat intake if ever you want to lower it down by first using it. So baka time nyo na to exercise, do resistance training, magbuhat, weightlifting to make use of that extra energy. Also, you can use that up by after exercising and make sure you increase your HDL or your very known good fats by consuming, yun yung tawag nating nutrient-rich foods na mataas sa fat. So there can be green leafy vegetables na gumagawa ng healthy fats. The moment we digest them, the fiber gets converted by our gut bacteria and can help promote, promote those short chains fatty acids sa ating katawan, olives, certain nuts and seeds, and avocado. Those are your go-to fats that you can do. And of course, remember, meron tayong four or five low-carb levels. Hindi lahat ay okay na kumain ng mga pagkain na sa caution list. If you need more healing, mas medyo, mas serious yung inyong condition, you might stay on our level four or five of low-carb, which means you have to be more on our safe list. Yung inyong carb allowance, you don't go over 50 grams of carb allowance in a day. And to guide you, of course, meron tayong safe, caution, and danger list. Makukuha nyo, you can print this copy in our jjrtanmd.com na kulangan ng MD. So that's our website where you can print your own food list na pwede nyo ilagay sa inyong pantry na pwedeng-pwede ninyong mabasa and you can study it on your own and you can see if it will fit you. In this website, meron din kaming telemed where we can, I can personally assess your condition right now based on your current way of eating and kung paano natin ito posibleng ma-improve. So, because even if merong mga ganitong study, we don't believe that low-carb Proper, clean, low-carb nutrition is bad for you because the proper nutrient-dense kind of low-carb targets the following. It lowers insulin, it lowers inflammation, and nalolower din yung oxidized LDL by producing more buoyant LDL at hindi yung mga pattern B na small, dense LDL. Pinapataas ito yung fat burning. Therefore, mawawala yung fat build up sa mga ugat. That is why we believe that low-carb nutrition is safe and is good as long as you do it the right way. So I think that's the end of our presentation for today on this topic na kinakataputan ng lahat ngayon on this study na nagsasabi that keto-like diet, almost like low-carb, I associated daw with high, re, higher risk of heart disease. So if these information are actually not new, the ones I presented to you, although marami ng studies ngayon, but these are already outlined in our LCF Masterclass. So if you are a graduate of LCF Masterclass, I hope alam nyo na hindi na kayo basta-basta magpapadala sa ganito because marami pong considerations when it comes to these things. So shall we review yung mga considerations natin? No need na? Kaya na ba? Clear na ba sa lahat? Okay na ba? Okay na ba? Thank you po, Ma'am Lorena. Maraming salamat po for always supporting us. Maraming salamat. Yung makapuno, if it's it's just a variant of uh, coconut, 
But if it's so, kapag ito ay uh, mature coconut na, yung matigas na, then it can be low carb. Pero kung ito yung soft pa, na matamis pa, then it is still high carb. So we still have to avoid that. Okay? For those for those with concerns and others, so meron tayong LCF Masterclass that can help you with. And for those na nagtatanong, for those na merong mga gumagamit ng sweeteners, artificial sweeteners, we have a video about that. For you to guide. So today, our topic is specifically on this study na showing that there is higher risk of heart attack daw among keto-like dieters. So I think you can just review our video if ever hindi nyo, na, hindi kayo nakapagsimula. But generally, keto-like diet may be associated with higher risk of heart disease if ever for me, kung meron mga katotohanan dito, it's only because they didn't do it right. Okay? Hindi tama yung paggawa nila ng low-carb nutrition. Okay? And it's not keto-like. It's either low-carb or it's keto, not keto-like. Okay? So, do clean low-carb for the takeaway. Do clean low-carb regularly. Save keto proportions only if with indication talaga sa inyo. Choose your fat source as well. Kasi hindi lahat ng fats ay created equal. May mga fats na ginawa sa factory that are highly inflammatory. And lastly, listen to your body. And if ever you don't know how to listen to your body, meron namang labs, but know how to analyze your labs well or make sure that you have a physician that you trust na alam kung ano ang mga changes na usually na nangyayari kapag ang isang tao ay nag-go into low-carb way of eating. So, yun lamang po for now. For more guided na lessons, we have that in our lcfmasterclass.com and for more information, nandiyan tayo sa jgrtanmd.com and as always, you know, just stick to our safe list. Stick to low carb so that we all stay safe. Maraming salamat po for LCF Center inquiries. You can message our admin Rochelle in this number. And of course, for our clinic schedules uh, and here in Cebu, we already accept appointments only by appointment. Lang po. Our walk-in is only saved for aesthetic side. Para sa hindi po nakakalam, I actually practice facial plastic surgery and ENT, head and neck, I'm a ENT and head and neck surgeon specializing in facial plastic surgery. So we only allot our walk-ins on facial plastics, yun talaga yung clinic natin, but for LCF concerns, we have it on appointment. Just message admin chat our manager in the clinic, in this number. So thank you so much. I hope to see you in our LCF Masterclass for more learning. Maraming salamat, everyone. That's all for today. I hope you always stay low-carb so that we all stay safe. Bye!